Now we get to our sponsors and supporters. And before we start, we have to thank them because without them, this whole event would not have been possible. So let me take the opportunity to thank our sponsors, our golden sponsors, Bosch, Daimler and LBBV. And of course, also our silver sponsors, MHP and Targens. So thank you very much. We will have the opportunity throughout the evening and also throughout the weekend to get to know our sponsors even better. So I leave it to that for the moment, but I also need to take the opportunity to thank all our supporters. And the list is a quite uh, an eclectic, great one. So let me say thank you to 51 Notes, P3 Group, Egypts, Blockchain Institute, KI Decentralized and BlockLab. Also to all of you, thank you very much. And throughout the last couple of weeks in preparation for this weekend, I had the opportunity already to realize that a lot of uh, people have worked hard to get this event organized and going. And a lot of them outside of the regular hours till late at night working on the weekend. So we have no chance but to really thank and be grateful to the whole team of BVCon for having set up the event this weekend. So thank you very much for all your effort. Thank you. <laughs> so let's uh, start getting technical and having a look at our schedule for this weekend. So we're having now our welcoming and rules of the games. So you are quite instructed now at least for the moment to know who has invited us and who we have to thank. Then we start uh, later on with some more information and then with a keynote, the ecosystem, where is blockchain going? Later on, we, I will be having the chance to call up the sponsors here on stage where they will basically introduce their challenges to you. Then we will have a networking break in the cafeteria. I'll get to that in a short while. Later on, we will then have a session where we have idea generation and team building. Then the chance is that teams have 30 seconds to present their ideas and uh, having a look if they can find more supporters to work on their ideas. And then at uh, 8.30, I'll get you all going throughout the weekend in order to begin the development and see what we will then achieve throughout the next couple of days. What we can't stress enough is then later when we get to it, to our networking event, so when you have the opportunity, we really have to stress you to be proactive and to get to know one another. Only if you know each other and if you know the skills that you have all brought to the table, you will be able really to form the teams that are best suited for your ideas. So use the time that we will be giving you throughout the networking uh, time to really get to know each other. Find out who is that person sitting next to me, what, what qualities is this person bringing to the table and is he valuable for the project that I am about to start. So don't be shy. If you're shy, you lose your time. So, you know, leave shy, shyness at home now, just get going. And we also have um, spoken about our challenges. We have challenges from our three golden sponsors. As I said, we will get to them in a short while. But I also can maybe mention that uh, Daimler has the challenge for mobility. ABBV has the challenge for finance. Bosch has the challenge for industry. But on top of that, we have our meta challenge. And our meta challenge is to envision the crypto future. So I'd like to read out a couple of lines from the text where we have started talking about the uh, meta challenge that stands a little bit above all the others on its own. So the text read, what happens when blockchain meets the internet of things industry 4.0 and finance. Where will our identity be stored? And where the billions of items of the future internet of things? And very important, which new ideas and solutions will come out at the crossroads of different branches? 
So this is the main challenge where we are tackling within the first hackathon blockchain here in Stuttgart. And it can combine elements of all the other challenges or tackle new and different fields of application. The focus here, and this is very important, is on the intersection between blockchain and Internet of Things. So that means that you can get going with your fantasy, combine the strains that you find great from the one challenge with the other challenge, and create your idea and your vision and bring it then here to the table, here to the stage and present it then on Sunday. So let your creat creativity loose and let it go because only then we will have the best results. And on Sunday when you will have then uh, presented all your projects here on stage, we will award you. We will award you also with some uh, Beautiful prizes. So let's talk about the prizes. The most visionary concept will be awarded 3,000 euros. The best technical implementation also with 3,000 euros. The best business model will get also a reward of 3,000. And the three sponsors' prizes for each one of the above categories will be also of 2,000 euros per prize. Now, Tonight, you guys will have to form teams and you will also have time to work together till Sunday at 12. So that's very important to you. You will have time starting from tonight to work till Sunday at 12. By that time, you will then be asked to hand over your final presentation to the hackathon staff. I want to stress one thing. My job is the one of the timekeeper. Now, my genes are very Italian, and Italians usually, they don't really take it seriously when it comes to time. But I was born here, I was brought up here, so my other part of my genes are very German, and they know how to take care of the time. So I'm very well known for being very precise. So I, at 12 o'clock, that will be it. So. No additional minutes, no additional time, so we require really to be on time. That's very important because we want to give the same chances to everyone. And I will be taking care of the time, so you will have me in your back, stressing you to be everywhere, wherever you have to be at the particular time. So, Sunday at 12 o'clock, you will have to hand over your final presentations, and then on Sunday, we will also have final pitches here in front of the expert jury. The best teams will then be awarded with the prizes that I've just highlighted a couple of seconds ago and that are still shown here on our board. What's also very important is that programming is allowed throughout the whole night. So there is no need to leave, to go anywhere. You can stay here can sleep here, you can work here. That's your new home now until Sunday. So if you wish, your teams are also welcome to stay, as I said, throughout the whole night. And it's very important that tomorrow morning you show up, all of you, here, sharp on time at 9 o'clock. That's very important because then we will present the mentors to you and we will give you further information. So it's very important, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, our next appointment here in this room at 9 a.m. And for all our social media junkies, if you want to talk to your friends out there in the outside world, you can always tweet and post as much as you like. We would be very happy if you do it. And use the hashtag, hashtag HackBC18. That's the one. I think we have some signs somewhere outside also where you can always refer to it. Otherwise, take a picture of it, note it down. That's, that's the key to the outside world. And talking about keys, I'd like to introduce to you now the gentleman that will be holding here our first keynote. So let's welcome, talking about the future of blockchain, Joachim Lokamp. Herzlich willkommen. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
Um, my name is Joachim Lokamp, and I'm uh, initiator and uh, also member of the board of the Bundesverband Blockchain, which is a German blockchain association. And uh, I'm also the, well, actually, I go without the slides because um, uh, we just discussed uh, a little bit. Uh, we had like kind of a misunderstanding of what the uh, keynote should be about. And, um, uh, but let me complete my introduction. So I'm also founder of Yolocom, which is a blockchain startup working on self-sovereign identity. And um, I wanted to talk still a little bit about the, uh, the Bundesblock to give you an introduction. Um, so it's like core members in the Bundesblock have founded in summer um, this organization because we felt like uh, that many people don't really uh, know how to understand um, blockchain, what implication it will be have um, for economy and also for society. And these people are not necessarily like uh, you are. And that's maybe a good point to ask, like how many techies are um, among you? Like who codes? Okay. And who is like from the business area? Okay, cool. Any other area we should know of? Something, politicians? No, okay, no politicians. <laughs> okay, but it's really important that these uh, people, you know, uh, whether you're not a business person or not a coder, that they also understand um, blockchain. And uh, so uh, we organized ourselves to actually uh, bring knowledge together and make it available to everyone. Because in the end, um, if politicians and you, here now in the news all the times, whether it's being in China or in Korea, they think about regulating um, ICOs or crypto uh, and so forth. And if um, these uh, regulations are not well educated and uh, just taken out of fear, then it's most likely that they cause more damage than actually um, protecting as they may have uh, been intended to. So this is a really um, Im important work and um, regulations, it's like, you know, for, me, for instance, like, like our startup is working on identity and so um, you will bump into the topic of identity, I'm sure, over the course of the hackathon because, um, you know, people have identities, things have an identity and you need identity to somehow create relationships and share things, make transactions, and so forth. So, um, but if you represent yourself with a digital identity in the digital world, like how can you trust this? And once you engage then at one point into um, a transaction, um, will then, for instance, uh, tax authority uh, approve this? Will they recognize that this is like um, you know, um, according to uh, the actual law or uh, the KYC procedures. All these fantasies that we have out there for uh, the blockchain, what it can solve, are um, very heavily uh, bound to some uh, kind of law structure um, that enables us to actually uh, provide these um, new kind of trust networks or the new ways how we organize. And this is actually what I would like to point out. Um, blockchain is just a tool, but what, what does it do? What does it promise? And all like the interruptions and uh, disintermediations, et cetera, et cetera, uh, what it will help us hopefully is to organize in a new way. And in the context of IoT, uh, we very quickly see that the complexity of interactions are exponentially growing. And for the human brain, definitely not possible to keep track of all these transactions, right? When you think in terms of user interfaces, et cetera, I mean, you, you don't want to um, interact with all these machines and things and sensors. Um, but you, you need an underlying structure that you basically can trust. And um, this is uh, a way of organizing. So 
every time when um, uh, a tool was introduced uh, to help us organize ourselves, uh, humanity actually made a leap. Um, that was with, for instance, like, I don't know if you ever seen like these grading sticks, uh, when you basically make a little carve into a piece of wood, and that meant, okay, one tribe exchanged like a cow with another tribe or something like this, right? So it was kind of a, um, a first blockchain thing. Um, of course, it was like based on trust. Um, but then, you know, it was money system, it was paper, it was printing press, it was the internet like the even bigger um, printing press digitally. And it allowed us to organize in a different way. And I think this is... Um, uh, how we can see or could see blockchain and think of how can it help us to organize in better ways? How can it help us to overcome um, like where we feel uh, it should help us with overcoming like the silo structures with some uh, organizations that are quite dominant right now and not necessarily helping um, solving problems um, that we feel are necessary. And I'm not pointing any names here, and I think it's good, you know, um, they did tremendous jobs and helped us to, to make things easier in many ways, but there is a next step. And we are now here to create this next step, and um, I'm really curious about how you approach this. And I feel here in Germany, and um, here I come a little bit back uh, to, to where I'm from. Um, well, that's not quite true. I'm, uh, I moved to Berlin uh, in 2014, but I feel quite home, so I say now that I'm from Berlin. It's quite amazing that like um, uh, it became naturally a gravitivity point uh, for blockchain. So if you want to meet like um, any of like the, the, the core developers, uh, whether it's from Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, they always come uh, to Berlin from time to time. Next week, Vitalik will be in town and all the Ethereum guys will sit together and hack for a while. And um, there's a whole abundance of, of, of meetups. So, um, Meetups, you are organizing one here, are a great tool that help really sharing and connecting and learning from each other. And I feel that um, we can be quite proud that uh, eventually uh, people are not going to Silicon Valley to uh, talk about blockchain and create like... <laughs> the crypto future, um, but actually they are coming to Berlin and to Germany. And uh, together with uh, providing like the, the legal foundations and working also with politicians on several levels, um, we have great uh, uh, interest from corporations, from uh, telcos to industry to banks. And um, what we really want or what we want to help to facilitate is that we create like these uh, multi-stakeholder relationships as you are also doing here now having like finance industry and mobility um, as, as, as focus on IOT uh, please also have in mind how uh, will your project that you will be working on over this weekend um, also be part of this ecosystem and here I actually want to close maybe and then uh, maybe you have a couple of questions. Um, Germany is also very good in a couple of treats and one of them is standardization. So that helps a lot when you want that things work. And so think in terms of standards and um, then there's like uh, three things I feel why uh, the German culture and the German economy and society works well with blockchain because when you go outside of Germany and people normally tell you, okay, actually you can trust Germans 
and Germany is kind of safe and it's pretty stable. So these are three good reasons and with this I uh, wish you a really um, fun weekend and I'm looking very much forward what your outcomes will be and uh, you're going to create the blockchain ecosystem. Thank you. So are there any questions? The last week up, uh, meet up was a Ethereum meet up on Tuesday. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, Vlad was talking about um, the proof of stake, Vlad Zamfir, and, but it was too much for me because it was like mathematical formulas and um, yeah. <laughs> Like a, uh, the blockchain startup, then better to be in Germany rather than there San Francisco or the the, uh, the uh, yeah. Actually, that's a very good question. So um, we we have an interesting situation. So um, we have like a whole ton of startups um, uh, in Germany. Uh, I think the last time we mapped were like uh, sixty plus, but uh, by now I think it's it's many more. Um, and um, but when you look like the startups um, that have their teams in Germany and which are actually having uh, their jurisdiction in Germany, it's a little bit a different story. And this I think we need to change. So this is also why I'm quite passionate to work to politicians because I don't want uh, that you need to go to another place uh, to be safe to, to, to uh, f uh, found your startup basically. Um, and uh, I mean, a friend of mine, uh, Christoph Jensch, he's the founder of Slockit and also was a uh, core member of the early Ethereum days. Uh, he was also the founder of ZDAO, and probably you know about ZDAO. So there were, um, you know, it was like new legal ground. Um, he has five kids, <laughs> and imagine like if he would need to go to jail because he tries something new. So we have to um, to talk. We have to be transparent, openly, and create the legal foundations that we can do so safely. You're from San Francisco, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool, welcome. <laughs> sure. Hello, uh, I'm starting a blockchain company. I wonder how Blockchain Bundesverband could potentially help founders. How we help founders? So one is like, you know, as I said, like the, um, the legal background. And, uh, but also uh, we have like 20 plus working groups. So if you need like expertise, for instance, in GDPR or privacy, or if you want to learn about the current state of identity, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we are happy to connect you with, with the people and give you an overview of the experts. And um, when you're planning an ICO, there's like, you know, um, we don't advise there. We don't write your smart contract. <laughs> there you have to find your own own way. But um, otherwise, if it's like really about like expertise and certain subjects, we are really happy to help. Um, you talked about identity before and several other countries, uh, companies try to solve this already, like Civic or Selfkey or Hyperledger Indie. How do you compare your startup uh, with these products? Yeah, that's a good question. So actually, um, so when we started to work on identity that was back in early 2014, the landscape looked very different. And we also started out with a different technology called social link data that was like, um, uh, from Tim Berners-Lee, it's, it's a project. And uh, so we moved slowly into this um, uh, space of blockchain, but our focus was always on identity and how would it be possible for you and me to have really control over your data. And um, so we wanted to make it right, that's why we're taking <laughs> really quite a while. And um, it's 
we want to have a self-sovereign identity. And a self-sovereign identity for me means that it's like completely autonomous, that we, in that sense, we are not um, uh, providing an identity for you, but we uh, built a software that allows you to create your own identity. And um, this can never be taken from you. And then you have like kind of sub-identities, et cetera, um, or key pairs that basically um, allow you to interact with uh, different backends. So you uh, not only have like an identity, let's say on Ethereum or on Bitcoin or on IOTA or wherever, but you have your identity that allows you to interact with uh, uh, other backends. And even like um, take like for instance, um, at the last DEF CON we presented um, a use case uh, prototype where we basi basically used data out of BigchainDB and inserted it with uh, the Yolocom identity into an Ethereum smart contract. And that's really cool because um, I don't think that we will have uh, blockchains that uh, will cover all use cases. So probably we will we'll have a whole ton of chains and they have dip uh, different capabilities. And uh, so it's super valuable also if you can interact with um, several blockchains. But the real, real difference is that um, right now we have like a, a, um, a key management that allows you to really own your identity. And we see it as a human right, so it's not a business model. That's super important. So we feel there's like tons of business models out there, but there should be no barrier that every and uh, yeah, really every person on the globe can have their identity. Any more questions? I think it's time to have fun. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joachim Lohkamp. Right, so I guess it's about time now to introduce to you our sponsors' challenges. And we'll start right away by uh, calling up on stage the first challenge, which will be under the umbrella of mobility. And it will be introduced to us by Jonas von Malotki, the head of the Department for Finance and Controlling at Daimler. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jonas, as already said. I'm from a very small startup, which is called Daimler AG. Uh, you may have heard it. It's quite new. So um, we build cars. Um, but not only that, but we also try to be a mobility provider for you. Um, yeah, I have two jobs in this company. The, the left one is the, the model job. Yeah. And the right one is the stuff I do at the uh, at work. Um, actually, the model job doesn't pay well, so I tend to to be a manager and um, I I try to foster the right technologies to use for a lot of different use cases. Uh, I studied computer science, so you don't have to talk sm uh, slow if you talk to me about code and stuff and Japanese studies. So, is there any Japanese here? No. Um, yeah, maybe you know a little bit of history. I mean, it's always history. We have to talk, to talk about that. Um, the German emperor, he believed in horses, and he really did. Yeah? And um, he thought that yeah, automobiles will be a passing phenomenon. Yeah? Um, maybe you know that changed a little bit during the time. Uh, in 1900, um, actually we had a riddle in there, but you, now we cannot do it. But in 1900, I mean, it's pointed out there, uh, there was only one car in New York. Uh, and in uh, 1913, you had really to, to um, get on the ice to find the, uh, the carriage over there. Yeah? And nowadays, New York changed again. Uh, former times, you had like a lot of yellow caps there running around. Um, the last time I was there in December, not so many yellow caps. And you all know why, uh, because there's a company that does something. I never heard that name before, so interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're 
small startup. We build cars and buses and trucks and so on. We, we make money uh, out of that a little bit over there. We have um, uh, 280,000 employees. Um, and um, yeah, this is now the new numbers came out. Um, you, you want to see that, but it's not so important because um, it's about the future. Yeah? and what we actually want to create. Um, we think of a comprehensive ecosystem, and that is also the, the new idea we have. So it's called CASE. It's co connected. Yeah, the car is connected. It, we have trucks that are connected for a long time now. It's autonomous. So how will that actually evolve, and how will that? what impact can we have on that? Um, and it's uh, shared and um, services, and it's electric, most probably the future. Yeah. So our vision, intuitive mobility, now moving from A to B, sometimes is a real hassle, uh, but we want to make it simpler. Uh, now, the other part of that is software. Yeah, if we talk about autonomous cars and connected cars and blockchain, we have software. Yeah? And I truly believe that uh, the next step in software is free and open source, so open source software. And we see that um, with the whole blockchain thing. Um, I don't think that I would ever use any blockchain implementation that would not be open source. Yeah? So. Let's start on that. We are engaging in that a little bit more, and we are moving towards also contributing. We are in Hyperledger, and we also want to contribute to um, technologies over there. But also the question is, um, what's the ecosystem? We had to talk about that before here. Um, and there's a lot of another, another open source technologies around that. If you think about automotive grade Linux and, and um, embedded Linux or uh, a lot of other things, and meetups and exchanging information, exchanging also knowledge. Yeah? And that is uh, one of the new ideas that we um, want to strive to. But now, now, if I would have talked to a lot of people in Daimler about blockchain like two years ago, and I did that, um, they would have, yeah, blockchain, what's that? Yeah, nobody, nobody needs that. Yeah, it's for the tinfoil hats. And now we see it's not. Yeah, so um, it is here to stay, and it will transform, and it will disrupt a lot of businesses. And the question is how? And that is one of the questions we try to, to figure out here. Yeah? We have, we, I see a large potential also in a traditional uh, a company like Daimler with a lot of different use cases, but I won't go over them because we want to transform also another thing. Yeah? Um, with this one is a use case. I think Martin will be here tomorrow as a coach. Um, he, uh, we implemented here a, a truck. Uh, and the question was, if you would pay for driving a truck in a, in a destabilized country or so, and you don't pay anymore, how can we make this truck stop? Yeah? That's the kind of idea behind that. And it's, they call it the truck wallet in the end. Also, how can the truck interact with several things? Uh, that is something we did together here with these guys from the LBB uh, V in German. Um, uh, this is the permissionary no thing. Yeah? You all read about that, I'm sure. Um, but we had a lot, so we were asking ourselves what kind of um, ideas can we bring here to you that you implement and have ideas about that. And we had this kind of brainstorming and there were a lot of different ideas that we are thinking about. But we said um, we want to move forward, so let's think about um, mobility and that's where you come into play and we want you uh, here Bender Bending Rodriguez uh, to implement and have ideas on mobility so the question is for us how can blockchain technology push mobility to the next level that's the overall question so imagine if you have autonomous cars or autonomous trucks, or even uh, sharing models like Car2Go, how can that be built upon blockchain? 
or how can blockchain influence this kind of uh, this kind of business model? Yeah. Um, so, autonomous driving might come around, and how can we use blockchain to be more efficient, to communicate, to be more safe, to have a, a better life, to have a more intuitive mobility? That's the question. Um, so we have two scenarios actually, um, but they are more a kind of um, hint to, to give you an idea. Um, this was one of the ideas an uh, employee from uh, our company had, actually from India. Um, he asked how can cars communicate um, more securely over blockchain technology, so car to X communication doesn't have to be car to car, but can also be maybe there's a traffic sign that sends out some signal and how can you identify that and say, okay, I, I really drove only 50 and the autonomous driver only, only 50, uh, I, I never sped, uh, uh, we're speeding. Yeah? And uh, you don't have this police guys behind you. And uh, how can an open distributed ledger help you by saving and sharing that kind of information? I mean, blockchain is a lot about sharing, it's about consensus, it's about um, openness. Yeah, um, like those kind of information and what is actually feasible and what makes sense to share and what might you don't want to share. Yeah? Um, the next thing is autonomous self-administering trucks and this was a use case which was quite interesting. If you think about platooning, platooning is where trucks on the autobahn find themselves together and put themselves in a chain. Yeah? Uh, it's not a blockchain, it's a truck chain. So that the first truck um, takes all the, the heat, uh, the, the wind, and uh, the second trucks that drive more efficiently uh, because they don't have to, they, they just stay in line uh, and they don't have to break the wind. So the question is, how can we make that trustable? Yeah, because that's some several trucks are finding the first trucks is using more gasoline or more electricity if it's electric, and the other trucks are profiting from that. But how can we exchange that kind of money? Yeah, or how can we trust each other there? And how can we find the right consensus mission mechanism to do that? Um, so that's a question you might want to implement. Um, I think I have a, yeah. Um, the, the important thing is we have stuff yeah, to actually do that. We have swag and devices and uh, things to implement on that. Um, and if you need more, you can just talk to us. And um, yeah, I hope you join our team in the mobility. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonas. And we will continue straight into the next challenge, which will be the topic finance. And I'm welcoming here on stage the head of corporate at uh, LBBV from the Landesbank Baden-Württemberg. Please welcome the managing director, Joachim Erdle. Welcome. So many thanks and also a warm welcome from my side. Uh, my name is Joachim Ertl, as already mentioned. I'm heading the corporate finance department, which is important when we, comes, uh, when we come down to the use cases. Uh, but even more interesting for you guys, I'm also the managing director of the venture capital subsidiary of LBBW. Um, so uh, we have an own, we have own, an, uh, own subsidiary, which is investing in early stage investments and companies. And maybe one of the other idea might be interesting as well for us in order to invest in such an idea and maybe to, to also um, at an early stage come up with seed financing as well. So um, when I was first time approached by my colleagues and this happened roughly two years ago regarding a use case based on blockchain, the first thing I said was, well guys, sounds interesting, but this is disrupting our business. So why should we as a bank support development in that technology. Um, then we discussed it, we did a more, bit more analyzing work on that. And finally, I was fascinated by the technology because it's not only a question of being more efficient in existing businesses. Um, I'm pretty much convinced um, that this will also create new business cases. And 
for us as a bank, it does mean that we will disrupt ourselves. So in terms of employee leadership, motivation, all that stuff, obviously, obviously it sounds a bit um, ironic if uh, we also support business models in the area of blockchain. Nevertheless, I'm pretty much convinced um, it will happen anyhow. So especially we decided as LBBW, given that our clients expect to be innovative, that we act actively drive innovation at least in that direction. So um, just to give you a, a uh, short overview, let me see how it works, of LBBW, I don't know whether you know LBBW, very brief. Um, we are the fourth largest bank in Germany and we are the largest London's bank in Germany. Um, we are active um, focusing on Germany and also Switzerland, Austria, but we have rep offices all over the world. Um, I think important is that we have a very, very stable ownership structure, which not only offers for us a strong capital base, but with all, which also enables us in order to invest into innovative and uh, maybe in sometimes disruptive uh, business models. The corporate Business for LBBW is most important because roughly two-thirds of the revenues will be generated um, together with our corporate, corporate clients. And uh, as you see, we offer a comprehensive range of services all around the corporate business. Um, I'm personally responsible for part of corporate financing, as you see, and this includes the bond, equity, IPO, financial rating advisory, um, but also all kind of structured business. And I'm especially in charge for promissory notes or Schulzweingeschäft, um, where we as LBBW came up with our first use case together with Jonas um, from Daimler, which was a great and which is still a great experience, um, given that a corporation which uh, started at uh, mid, uh, no, at, at the beginning of 2017, maybe end of 16, is still going on. So this also gives you an idea that this is a very, very successful corporation. So what we did, I don't want to go deeper into that because I guess you know all of that. Um, we came up with the first use case on the blockchain by executing a Schulzschein darling on the blockchain. Maybe interesting to, to mention here, technology was based on Ethereum. Um, we um, started with our prototype and MVP on Ethereum, so we stayed with Ethereum nevertheless. We are currently reviewing and also testing other protocols as well. So currently we are, well, about to um, further develop this into, for example, Corda, because we think that Corda also offers some advantages um, compared to Ethereum. Important, this was a private blockchain or a public blockchain. I'm aware of all the phil philosophical discussions around whether this is a real blockchain or not, but for us it was important to understand the technological advantages and maybe opportunities blockchain offers. So therefore, um, we decided to uh, develop our use case within a professional area. And maybe some features which are mentioned here, um, I think uh, smart contract uh, clearly is one of the key issues here we solved and we, we, we tried and learned a lot about that. But also we included tokenization as well. And uh, coming to tokenization, this really at least provides for us as a bank one of a key opportunity going forward, given that, um, I mean, basically what it comes down to is to have digital assets to be transferred from A to B, um, ideally on a more efficient way, maybe uh, using totally new processes. And um, therefore, we decided to come up with a challenge naming how could banks evolve towards the service and security provider in a tokenized world. So to be a bit more precise and give you some ideas, um, what might be interesting for us, um, I give you two potential ideas what we, what we are interested in. Nevertheless, be creative, help us to be more successful in that area. You see that we've already created use cases, we created real deals on the blockchain, which is for a bank together with a client, a, a very new experience. And um, so one idea could be to use tokenization in private placements within other products. So we did this already with Shulchain, but one could do this with structured loans, 
maybe with commercial papers or also maybe um, with callables or something like that. So if you came up with an idea how we can extend our blockchain experience into new products, that would be definitely interesting for us. A second idea could be that uh, we go into a total different area. So um, in a digital ecosystem, um, one could think about that uh, at one certain point of time, when and for totally independent, whether this is a, a relationship between two corporates or whether this is a machine-to-machine -machine transaction. So at a certain stage, there will be created a claim which, uh, which has the supplier against the buyer. And this claim, at the moment, is a very, very paper-based work. So if you could help us to digitalize at a very early stage the asset, i.e. the receivable, and come up with an idea how this could be digitalized through a whole process, including payment at a very early stage, this will lead to not only materially more efficient processes, but it will also lead to maybe totally new business models. So these are some ideas, at least from our side. We are very happy if you come up with uh, other, maybe more creative ideas. And uh, I really look forward to Sunday when we, when we see your presentation. I look forward to really new ideas. And uh, if you have any questions in between, we have people on the ground. Targens, which is a subsidiary of LBBW, is one of the Together with BabyCon. So we look forward to Sunday. Good luck and have a lot of fun. Thank you very much. So we have heard more. And now it's the time for industry. So let's welcome here the project director, Economy of Things, from Robert Bosch, Nick Sharman. Welcome. Yeah, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to um, have a, a very abstract presentation, but I think this is okay because the whole weekend will be um, to make the abstract stuff um, so, and um, build it in a way that it will compile. So I'll talk about the economy of things and um, mutual distributed ledgers. Um, you will only see the word blockchain once, and that's more or less a mistake. I, I'd like to talk about distributed ledgers. The mutual is in there because it, it uh, makes sure that the social aspect of, of um, distributed ledgers is stressed. So distributed ledgers will be the word we, we are going to hear uh, in the next minutes. Um, so this is a slide, and this is already the first, uh, the only um, time when blockchain comes up. This is from our boss, um, Mr. Denner, last year from the um, Bosch Connected World, and he was talking about taking IoT to the next level, and obviously there are many components needed to do so. So we have artificial intelligence, cloud and fog computing, the IoT networks, and um, we also believe as a company that um, uh, blockchains, or in this case mutual distributed ledgers, will play a key role in, in bringing this um, next step. I am going to skip this whole key facts issue here. If anybody is interested about um, Bosch key facts, yeah, you can obviously look it up in the internet. Um, so I'll dig into this uh, MDL technology and impact. And I cannot overstress that the whole point, from my point of view, about these MDL, MDL based systems is, they, that, is that they um, solve some sort of paradox. Yeah, we need um, some logically centralized transaction infrastructure on the one hand side, so a ground truth, so to speak. And this is uh, realized on a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. So we can realize um, the, the problems which were formerly realized by platform monopolies or proprietary platform monop monopolies now in an alternative way, which I think is, is very interesting. And um, if we do this, we can come to an economy of things. 
but not directly. So um, we believe that there will be several steps in, in this transformation. So the first step is, is this digital currency step. Everybody obviously heard about um, the digital currently, currency use cases. I'm going to skip the, the two, three, and four, and um, the, the long-term goal would obviously be to have an um, economic device. So we have an algorithm, a car, a sensor, uh, whatever, which can have its own business model and interact with other machines, other humans, and, and other companies. So um, there are basically three different um, perspectives on this um, MDL-induced change. So the, from my perspective, the most uh, important one is obviously this decentralization issue and, and that these systems provide an alternative to the classical game where this winner-takes-it-all effect is taking place, who is going to run the next platform. And, and um, we believe that this inhibited many domains in, in bringing and, and realizing their, their innovation and innovative potential because always the game was who is going to um, um, be the front runner on the network externalities that happen. So this system can decentralize it and make cooperation between companies um, across domains far easier than this was formerly possible. And out of that, out of this, this destroying of the silos, uh, we believe there will be um, a new innovation coming out, um, new cross-industry value networks, um, new business models. We don't really know yet. That's the whole idea of, of this innovation. But I think um, we will see stuff we, we cannot imagine yet. And from, from a Bosch perspective, that's this evolved part. Um, if we have a common space platform where things can coordinate themselves, there still need to be products that can do it very well. And, and this will probably the Bosch part. We can build good products and we plan to do so in the future, um, and especially in an economy of things context. So this is the challenge. Um, the, um, it's um, from, from the industrial background. Um, I'm not going to read this. Um, I'm just trying to bring over the spirit of this challenge. Um, it's the trust of origin and trust of accuracy idea. So we have um, sensor data from um, a crane, for example, and this crane is owned by a business entity. And this sensor data needs to go somewhere where it can be analyzed um, to, um, for example, make predictive maintenance plans. So this is probably another business entity with other goals and different goals. And now this aggregated data needs to travel further to an insurer, um, which makes its own decisions about it. And then again, these decisions uh, travel back to the, to the bridge or the bridge operator company. So the whole point is here that we have many domain and many um, company borders we have to overcome. And um, I think that um, distributed ledgers will be a very good way to do so. If you... Um, build this um, challenge, or if you try to solve this challenge, please keep in mind, I think that a decentralized system is only as decentralized as its most centralized part. So keep in mind, we want to see something where um, you can push the decentralization idea as uh, far as you can. So thank you and good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, thanks. So, these were our three golden sponsors who have presented to you now our challenges for this weekend. But we also want to take the opportunity to introduce to you our silver sponsors. They also have quite a lot to say here, uh, especially at this uh, hackathon in Stuttgart. And uh, I'd like to start with our first silver sponsor, which is the company MHP management and IT consulting. And I'd like to welcome here on stage now, Dr. Katharina Schubert, which is the manager for mobility services and strategy. And here she comes, welcome. Hi all. Um, okay, thank you. So my name is Katharina and I'm here together with a couple of great and innovative colleagues of mine to represent MHP at this event and I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited. So 
I'm not an IT specialist in a traditional sense. So obviously I'm not an IT specialist at all. I've always been trying to adapt different skills and to combine different disciplines because I wanted to understand things and shape them in a holistic and sustainable way, not only partially. So, and this is exactly what we are doing by MHP. We're trying to shape the future of mobility and manufacturing by making use of the most diverse but always fantastic skills of all our employees. So, focusing on mobility, um, I want to talk about two mega trends in this sector. And I would like to illustrate them with three examples, very quick. So, classical supply chains are evolving into digital supply networks at the moment. That means new partners, a lot more of information and data as a currency are actual topics. Second, people without a car are no longer dependent from public transports because car owners can share a ride with them easily. And last but not least, used car, used car owners, used car buyers and used car sellers um, do not longer uh, need a local dealer. They can connect and deal with each other directly, peer-to-peer, -peer, online, without regional boundaries and without intermediaries. So the two mega trends I'm referring to are globalization and digitalization. These trends bring lots of challenges for all stakeholders involved. So blockchain technology seems to be a suitable solution for most of them. But what is often forgotten in the face of all the enthusiasm that comes along with blockchain technology is blockchain is not a panacea, it is still only a distributed ledger. So, and therefore, we have to remember that beyond all the advantages blockchain technology brings, um, there are weaknesses we should consider. And therefore, the use of blockchain should be well considered. Two. So we identified three crucial questions um, that can help one to evaluate the blockchain needs. Of course, it is much more easy to raise these questions than to answer them. Therefore, we developed a lot of um, approaches and methods and tools that will support. But what all these methods and tools have in common is one thing. They all focus on the problem and on the user's needs. And this is exactly the message I would like to give to the teams here today. Focus on the problem and on the user's needs while you create the best solution. Never rely solely on the technology, even or rather especially if it is hyped as a panacea. So, and with you keeping this in mind, for me there's only left to say, let's change the future and have fun.